<laughs> I have a question I've been thinking about from the day I was born. <laughs> That's <laughs> quite an interesting uh, conceit. What do you mean by an x86 license? Why can't NVIDIA obtain an x86 license or create x86 CPUs? Alex, do you have any insight on that? Uh, well, someone originally came up with the instruction set. Yes. <laughs> And they own the the rights to it. Yeah. Um, I Intel. And it, I, Intel, and in this case, you know, they've licensed it out. Uh, other people have expanded on it. X sixty four is AMD's. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. It's like a cross yeah. licensing arrangement that basically has produced this standardized platform. Yeah. Which is good, obviously, um, and it also prevents certain things like. Imagine if you had to shader compile for your CPU. Imagine, <laughs> imagine the hell we'd have to go through for that. Um, that would be interesting. Uh, so it prevents a lot of things. The hardware standardization is great, but I mean, they want to control their own market, and they they do. So Intel and AMD have not been giving that x86 license to NVIDIA, um, and they've gone instead to ARM in the past. Yeah. And they've done, worked on ARM CPU cores. Um, and I think that's their thing in the future, uh, is what they want to do. And I think, you know, the whole mobile development platform and like certain, you know, x86 is great. I, I actually like x86. I like just this great historical continuity. Uh, but it leaves room for, there's not as much innovation space as a result of it. And then as a result, things that have more, they can, you know, they can conquer different things like pri like power and performance in different ways, or they can take the, the Apple route with that interesting, like embedded memory. So I think the the other things that aren't x86 also have their, a great place in the world of computing. Mm -hmm. Oliver, any additions? Yeah, basically it just boils down to like very few companies have an X86 license. Um, AMD and Intel have a cross-licensing agreement that basically allows them to continue to develop <laughs> CPUs using uh, the other competitors' technology and to continue to maintain it so that they can both produce CPUs. But they have no obligation to license to third parties. Um, in patent law, there's a concept called FRAND or free... Uh, or rather fair, oh, yeah. reasonable, and non-discriminatory licensing. Um, this does not fall under FRAND, but perhaps it should be. <laughs> but at the same time, we are seeing a lot of competition from ARM. And uh, so is it that impactful at this point? Maybe not, but in the past, I think it has been pretty impactful. But yeah, yeah it's just one of those situations where they have no obligation to license and they don't. Yeah, there are other companies that have x86 licenses, like I think Via is the, is the classic yeah. one, but they can't actually um, uh, oh, yeah. produce anything other than 32-bit x86 uh, CPUs. So they're not tied into the cross-licensing arrangement that Intel and yeah. uh, AMD have got. So you uh, you couldn't really use a Via CPU. And secondly, you know, you might imagine that maybe Nvidia could buy Via and get get access that way but they can't because but, the licenses are not transferable and there are specific clauses that cover acquisition from another company so yeah the lawyers had presumably had a field day with that back in the day but it does result in what we have today which is basically a duopoly on x86 and uh, nothing is yeah. going to change soon in terms of competition um, that argument you know you could possibly have you know, appealed against this du uh, duopoly. But um, what with everything that's happening with ARM now um, and the fact that Windows is, is supporting ARM, again, you know, it's it's coming into the fore there as a form of competition. So that's kind of closes that off. 